TGIF. So we're glad to be here today, the last working day of the week. So today we're turning our focus to Nigeria's energy sector, a landscape brimming with potential and navigating a period of significant change. First of all, let's start from 2023. How did our energy sector fare last year? And in 2023, we elected a new president, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and he came to make a decision that would shift, make a lot of changes in the energy sector. The first thing he did was the removal of fuel subsidies, a contentious but necessary step, which was aimed at streamlining spending to empower and further creates further investments in the energy sector. The year also witnessed key appointments, including industry vet veterans, Heineken Lokobiri and Ikberikbe Ekpo as ministers for states for petroleum resources. Now, this year, 2024, is expected to be a landmark year for Nigeria's energy sector, with the Petroleum Industry Act entering its third year of implementation. Now, we can anticipate significant milestones, for example, the $2.8 billion Ajao Kuta to Kaduna to Kanu gas pipeline project, which is slated for completion by July this year, and it will mark a crucial step towards harnessing Nigeria's vast gas reserves. Now, in spite of all these things, all these changes that have taken place, there are still some challenges in this sector. Now, the Minister for States for Petroleum Resources, Heineken Lopobiri, has warned of potential license revocations for marginal fields if development stalls. However, this underscores the government's commitment to optimizing production. In addition, there are also exciting prospects on the horizon. The commencement of the construction of Nigeria to Morocco gas pipeline is also a testament about Nigeria's ambition to become a regional energy powerhouse. So, this year, 2024, Nigeria's energy sector is on the cusp of transformative era with renewed focus, strategic investments, and a drive to exploit its gas potential. Nigeria is poised to secure a bright energy future. Now, to discuss Nigeria's energy sector, the year 2023, but with more focus on the year 2024, is Kende Adeaga. He's a guest and he's also the, a financial analyst, a market analyst, and a veteran broadcaster. And he's going to analyze the Nigeria's energy sector. Well, we'll talk about a bit of 2023, but we'll focus more on 2024. So welcome to Market Insight, Mr. Adeaga. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, yeah, so I'm glad you're here this morning. I hope it wasn't so difficult coming to the studio. No, not at all. It's a, it's a familiar terrain. Okay. And uh, it was as easy as coming to the island. Okay, that, so. that's great to hear. That's absolutely wonderful to hear. Okay, Nigeria's energy sector. Now, we talked about uh, the changes our uh, president made from last year when he was elect inaugurated. And also this year, we have two new ministers. And we also have seen um, the removal of fuel subsidy. And all these things have greatly impacted on our energy sector, particularly with um, focus to petroleum. And we've also seen um, the private partnership with Dangote Refineries that also recently launched launched and um, we've also seen that it has helped to reduce the price of diesel but before we talk about diesel let's talk about the fuel now i'm sure you've noticed recently in the news there has been um, fuel queues at different states in nigeria including the federal capital territory and this is quite shocking because we are an oil producing country so why does this keep recurring this issue of fuel queues well it will keep recurring for so many reasons the first reason being that um, is our government seriously ready to make uh, fuel available at every point in time? Uh, my, my, my take on that is that government is not ready because the, the, um, the pot that is cooking the oil is not in good shape. That is the refinery. So they are working on the refinery, so, so we heard. Whether they are working to achieve positive, we don't know. What they have said, or what that is what the government have said, is that the refinery, as, at, at, I think as at last year, we were told by December it will be functionary. And uh, this is April. Uh, we haven't seen so much. Yes, it may have been working, but do we see the physical thing? Because the only way we can see it or feel it 
is when there are no queues. And because we have queues, it, it, it then means that um, what is needed to be done was not rightly done or badly done. Because when you plan, you would have put into pro proper perspective uh, the gesticulation period, the um, manifestation period, where those things will manifest physically. On paper, they may have said December, but the physical term that we can see that is visible may not be December. So what I expect the government to have said at that time is, within this period and this period, it's, it's like a projection. We are anticipating that within this period and this period, this thing will manifest. Uh, considering the fact that they must have exhausted, I mean, they must have put into place the financial involvement, they must have put all those analysis together to be able to say, by social time, it will be. But for them to be definite about December, that was a, a, a first step in the wrong direction. And so, whether we like it or not, we we'll still have this skill. Dangote coming into being, we know, cannot refine the crude almost immediately came into in, in, almost immediately came into being. There are processes that are involved, and the machineries that will be used must have uh, some some kind of expertise who will say who or who can say by social time this thing will be functionary. But we haven't seen that. So for me, I think government need to do more for us to know or to accept the fact that they can do. In a, in, you know what we, the Nigerian uh, scenario, where you pay a contractor to do something, the, the contractor drags on. The reason why it's dragging on is probably because the contractor is not being paid or he's half paid. And he also is looking at if at the end of the day, when he must have executed the job, Will the, com will the money be completely paid? So is caution, is careful about how he expend what he got. Because whether we like it or not, the staff that will be doing that work will be paid. And if they are not paid, tendencies are that within the frame of time, they can down to. And when they down to, it means the work will not go. So all this must be put into proper perspective for us to have a definite thing of definite refinery work, working functionally to its minimum. Okay, and we hope that when there is when that kind of thing happens, we will see less fuel queues. Of course. But, um, you, know, you, you know, again, you have to consider all the stakeholders in this thing. And the major stakeholders are the petroleum marketers, independent petroleum marketers. Have they called them to a round table to talk? What is the way forward? That is what they should be asking them. Because, for instance, what we had is that to bring in a liter of fuel in discharging at the port or whatever, it cost them almost 700 naira per liter to discharge. Now, you now expect somebody who takes something at 700 to come and sell it at 600. Is the person making gain That's or making loss. loss? It's at a loss. So nobody will want to do that. And that is the reason why we've been hearing about subsidy, subsidy, subsidy. But the subsidy we have had in Nigeria is a kind of uh, um, party party kind of subsidy where somebody collects money for services he or she didn't render. We've had so cases we where they bring... Party party kind of subsidy. Party party in the sense that, oh, I know this person. He can bring in fuel. And then you allow him, you give him the paper, you give, sign everything to him, and he collects the money. And he goes and brings empty vessel. We've had cases like that. But he brings in empty vessel, discharging nothing. But we can't really prove it. In, in we can't case. prove it, but we have had them, even the operators saying it. Even the operators saying it. Even government itself saying that what they have discovered is that some people don't even bring in anything. But they haven't told us, this are, they haven't said we have caught them or these are the people. So it, it, it makes us feel that it's a party party thing. Because if you have caught somebody and you have used such person as a scapegoat, others will sit tight. Every other person will know it's not business as usual. And then 
you collect something, you bring it. It's not a force. You want to bring in something in. They have told you this is how much they can give you. You look at it. Is it profitable to you? If it's profitable, you come. If it's not profitable, you opt out. It's not a must. And government, because they know that it's not a must thing, if they are giving you something at, say, six naira, and you know you cannot make any gain out of that six naira, and you say you can't do it, they will find a way of bringing it themselves. Which is what we have seen now, the differences between the government-owned, um, um, uh, what do you call it, oil company, and independent marketers. NMPC is selling at 568. Other independent marketers are selling at between 590 to 700. And in some states, we have it sold at 1,000 plus. Yes, but as you know, this whole scenario, yes, we heard when this subsidy was going to be removed, that it was supposed to, the money saved from it to be able to use to invest in our economy yeah. and help our citizens. But we haven't really seen that because every now and then we have um, four queues and then the some right the current one going on in Abuja and five other states um there's been some speculation that marketers want to increase the price of fuel and then so you see petrol stations hoarding some of them just close down the station and then people are left to queue up for fall at the few stations petrol stations that are open so you know at the end of the day it's still the masses the the common man that bears the cost of this no matter so if the price is increased you know it's still the common man that will bear the cost so this really doesn't benefit us and and uh, we know that it's i mean we're citizens of this country so what the government's policies should always you see the bulk of it stops on the government government says even this it's just a speculation I remember last week, I wanted to buy fuel in a filling station, and they, they had fuel. It's not as if they don't. They had it. But they were selling it in bits. Why? Because they said they anticipate that the price may go down. You get it? So now, they don't want to be caught napping, because the price at which they bought, they were believing that if it's true that the price will go down, it means they'll be running at, it, at a loss. Because at that point, they expect that um, the regulator will come after them. And so they don't, want them, they don't want to be caught napping. Now, government, what government ought to have done, I talk about this regularly. We, we've had in the past, maybe because we are running a civilian government, that is why things are going the way they are going. If it were to be military government, I can assure you, today, you would have seen some filling stations shut down. Not for anything, but because they were selling above pump price. Because, for instance, you buy fuel today at 10 naira. You are expected to add a little margin. It can't be above 20 naira. You now decided that, oh, I'm going to sell my 30 naira. Doing so means that you are making people to feel, ah, if I don't buy it, I can't get it. So now, what government, the military era then, what they do is they go to those stations and they either get it dispensed free or shut you down. So in civilian era, everything is about the process, the law, the whatever, which is okay, but we must put um, human face into it. And that is to say that if government says we are bringing this thing down, let them be sure they are bringing it down. And let them be sure it is with human face they are doing it. So that even the marketers themselves would have no choice other than to do the bidding of the government. For instance, when NNPC said they were going to be selling at 568, it has been that, like that. But in other states, which they also clarified that because of the cost of transporting it to those other states, the prices cannot be the same. And so, if you go to Ibadan, for instance, in fact, not even Ibadan, in let's Ubu state, in, it's over in Ubu states, in Ubu states, just Mowe here, there are about, between Mowe and uh, Ibafo, there are about five or six NMPC filling stations. If you go there, their prices are different. Why? Because they have added the transportation cost of supplying those states. So you cannot blame them. But in Lagos, 
they have said you cannot go beyond this, which is what NNPC is standing by. And the other marketers too cannot overprice their stock because they know the DPR can come at them at any time. Yes. So we need enforcement. When there is enforcement, people will take caution. Now, what are the challenges facing the implementation of the Petroleum Industry Act? From the information I gathered, I understand that uh, there are some loopholes in the uh, Petroleum Act, which is the reason why some uh, practitioners in that industry or in that space are taking advantage of and is been causing some ripples in, with government, with uh, ministry and parastatus. For instance, um, as at the time this act was being proposed, uh, a practitioner then told me that um, how many practitioners or operators were gathered to, to seek for their views in this, thing, in this act. That those who were put together, those who were called, were more like uh, government appointees, so to say. And because they are government appointees, they, are, they will dance naturally to government soon. Are you getting it? Now, they feel that if they are like them, who are the private practitioner, the operators that the act will work for, they know what they will be asking for. And so the moment they put into those things, it will help to shape the industry properly, that there won't be any cause for anyone operating in that space to have reason to say what government is doing is wrong or that the act itself is not going to work for Nigeria. 2023, we saw that we had some challenges with the act. And why did we have the challenges? It's because the operators were not carried along. And so it is natural. When you are not carried along for, uh, for a law that will be imposed on you, you will definitely react. The only reaction will be negative. Positive reaction means that that thing is working. But because they are reacting negatively, it means there is still something that needed to be done. So maybe now, government may, haven't established that, haven't seen it done, I mean used in 2023. Going forward, they needed to continuously review it so that in the process of reviewing it, they will come along maybe some act, some parts that is not making it work as they expected. And then they can ask the practitioner, the operators, and say, come, we notice this area. And you know, in every law, in every policies, people are looking at the loopholes. The one who initiates is the only one who feels or think what I'm doing is right. And it is that person that can say, oh, I suspect there will be a loophole here, and I, I already plan ahead to mitigate against it or to protect it or to defend it. But if you haven't done that, it's not possible. We'll continuously have issues around that uh, space. Okay. Okay. So, but right now with this new act, yes, the practitioners were called in and definitely because we have more stakeholders, it's actually, so what other challenges could be affecting the implementation? The petrol, because the practitioners were invited so that this act would benefit all stakeholders involved. So what could be? Yes. You see, like I said, I said, not all the practitioners, of course, we cannot have all of them, but the ones who practice, who work there, who, who put their investment are those who are supposed to be called for discussion. Now, if you don't call them, give or take, you will still have one issue or the other as time goes on. As the implementation goes on, you will still have one issue or the other. In order to avoid that, that's what I'm saying, as we go on, the initiator of that act would have looked at it and said, okay, based on this reaction from stakeholders, I think the reason why they are reacting this way is this part. Is either you remove that part or you modify it to suit the purpose of that thing. If you don't do that, you will just be going front and back, front and back. Again, 
Um, I'm sorry to say, our lawmakers that pass these acts, how knowledgeable are they about the acts? What I mean by that is, have they had interaction with stakeholders individually? You may not be an oil expert. For instance, I'm not an oil expert. But if you bring an issue up regarding the energy sector, because I am affected, I can tell you how I feel. And so you can take that up. But if I am not affected, I will rarely see anything. So you can't get anything out of me. It's the same way that those who are enacting our laws, how knowledgeable are they about what they are enacting? If they are knowledgeable enough, we won't have any issue. But when they are not knowledgeable enough, then we start having issues around it. And then we'll keep going front and back, front and back. Now, just to, like, perhaps as a solution, do you really think it's, um, it's good for perhaps when this, um, this Petroleum Industry Act is being conceived, when it's still at its discussion stage, yeah. if we could have a representative from the people, apart from the lawmakers, because, you know, the, the common Nigerian is the one that is always affected as to how these policies go, how they how the trend flows. So is it, wouldn't it be um, fair to have a representative from the people, perhaps maybe at a town hall meeting, to actually hear the people's opinions, the people's thoughts on these issues? Would that serve <laughs> as a solution? For I think people? that will go a long way into resolving it. Because even in developed countries, they have this town hall meeting and they don't uh, make it uh, a one-off thing. It's a regular thing because things change every other day. So when you have a town hall meeting, at a point they were having town hall meeting almost every quarter. But somehow, to some extent, they stopped it. But I think they need to reenact it, whereby stakeholders will have opportunity to talk. And as they are talking, they are taking notes. As you are taking notes, you are going back. It's like a feedback thing. You are going back to consider all the um, views and pick those ones that you feel, oh, these are germane. These are things that, as human beings, they cannot tell us that they also are not feeling it. They are. But we are, we are feeling it more than others. So we feel it more. They don't feel it as much as we feel it. So whatever thing they get out of us should be part of what we put together so that at the end of it, for the lawmakers, for the government, for the practitioners in the industry, for the consumers of those items, everybody will know that at least to some extent. We just needed to meet ourselves just uh, at a level where we can say, everybody can say, oh, at least I'm okay. It's not compulsorily that it will be 100%, but at least I'm okay. And as we move on, we'll keep looking at them. And then we'll see changes that will eventually become what we expect. Rome, like they said, is not built in a day. So we should expect that it's a continuous process. And so government should encourage uh, the populace to know that it's a continuous process. But of course, they must do it with human feeling. Government should not say, oh, uh, it's, uh, it's a process. And then if you can't stand it, forget it. No. It's a case of, we know it's a process, but let us see that you are working. Not that you just make us feel it's a process and you are supposed to implement it or make it real. You are doing the other thing. Yes, sir. Thank you for that. Sir. As you rightfully said, yes, that human feeling yeah. should always be there. So the um, Ajaokuta to Kaduna to Kanu gas pipeline, which cost about $2.5 billion. So now this is a very good opportunity for gas, for the gas sector in, in Nigeria. Now, what opportunities does it present for domestic gas utilization, this new pipeline that is being um, It will cause a reduction in the uh, gas supply. I mean, a gas purchase. For instance, an household, majority of households these days are using gas. So if the gas can come down, some, the other time, I think about three weeks ago or so, somebody was telling me that a liter of, uh, a liter of uh, kerosene, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, a liter of uh, kerosene costs about 1,004 or so. 
<laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Yeah. Cost about one thousand nine one thousand four hundred naira or so. And I I I I was like I was like, is this true? Because the last time I know I bought kerosene some years back was like fifty naira. That's you a know? long time ago. It was a long time. So when I had a liter, one thousand four hundred naira, I looked at it comparing it with fuel, which is just uh, five hundred and something. I was like, it depends on the petrol station. Yes, I, I agree. But I was like, this is an item or product that somebody used to cook. And it's costing this much. It then means that if you have to use one liter to cook, it may not be sufficient. So you'll be using like maybe 5,000 to cook. Then I looked at it from somebody, commercial aspect of it, somebody who cooks to sell and is not using gas. He has to use kerosene. Ha, definitely, price of food items that will be produced, that will be um, done in that area will be high. So, government need to look at that area. Let cost of gas be down. Kerosene, let it be down. Diesel, let it be down. This, all these things are items under crude. They are like, uh, um, what, what do you call it? Additional uh, parts of crude oil. So, now, the Ajakuta Kaduna Tokano Axis one is going to create more employment. It's going to make those axes to have internally generated revenue more. But what will be the challenge will be when there are pip pipeline busting. We have seen it in the petroleum end where pipes are busted and everything. Once that starts happening, it's dangerous to us is is going to cause more damage to our economy because something that you are trying to make available for people and somebody is busting it it means uh, each time there is a bust they will need to go and get it repaired and there will be a breakdown of the supply so and that will equally translate into cost higher cost of that item so i plead with government that they can continue and do it, they should go ahead. Yeah, it's a bit completed, hopefully, this July. Yes, they should go ahead, but they should also be mindful of how secure the pipelines are. For instance, I, there's, a, there's a place in First Tax Aziz where they say Buva Zones. What I understand by that is that you don't build on those areas. But today, we have buildings all over around that Buva zones. And I'm wondering, who gave the authorization for those who are building on those uh, land? Because when the, uh, the pipes will be bust, the cost is, will not be something that we, con we can quantify. Apart from the fact that it's going to destroy those places, is going to cause havoc to human because there are possibilities of people be being ahead. so much casualty. So I, I wonder who gave it out, who sold it out, and these are things that government need to uh, on their own. You don't so need more to regulations. regulations. We need exactly. We yes. need a whole lot of regulation and anyone who is co said, copyable, yes, who is copyable, make them as scapegoat. When they are used as a scapegoat, it will cause others to sit tight. But a situation where the enforcement arm is not doing it. Of course, we, you have, we've had cases where sentiments are attached. When people are arrested... Well, let's, I think it, we should stick to the, to the good sides of this. Now, we know that this is a billion-dollar industry. It's a billion-dollar investment. So now, how can Nigeria ensure it attracts the necessary investment to keep developing its gas resources? How do we attract more foreign investment? You see, you can only attract foreign investment or foreign investors in that space if they are sure that it's well secured. If it's not secured, no investor would take his or her money to a place where security is not guaranteed. Because the first thing an investor is looking at is return on its investment and how he or she can exit 
with his uh, profit. So government must put into place security. It is when you can guarantee security that you see a whole lot of investors. Look at the gen uh, the discos, the Jenkos. You ask, why are we not seeing foreign investors in that space? You okay. the, re the reason why we are not seeing them is because they don't see the security and they don't see the policy that supports that space. The policy that supports that place is not there. And so they don't just want to bring money. Otherwise, we would have seen foreign investors. I mean, it's a, it's a, a, a gold mine. It's a gold mine, so they want to take advantage, but they are not taking advantage. Well, we have a few of um, some foreign investors, some German energy companies coming into our electricity sector. So that's why the sector has been privatized. It's been privatized, but the policy does this policy support the privatization? We have been talking about uh, consumption, distribution, transmission, and then you you ordinarily government is not supposed to be involved in that area. Where today is government that is fixing price of uh, uh, electricity, it's not supposed to be. But what we see is ordinarily everybody is entitled to, uh, to electricity. So if you, what you consume is what you pay for. Here we, today we start hearing band A, band B, band whatever. And then they will tell you because you are rich, that's why you are putting this band. No, it is simply because. You, whatever you generate, whatever you consume, should be what you pay for. But what we have seen is, I mean, it's disturbing. It's disturbing. Government need to hands off some things and allow the private people to push it, to be the driver of that sector. And when that happens, you will know. Nobody wants to go into business and lose. But for you not to lose, you must provide. Like I keep telling people, I said, if... Uh, electricity can be provided to me 24 hours. I'm ready to pay. It then means that I will know what and what to use at what time so that I also will be looking at it from the commercial end. I cannot just say, okay, because I've been given 24-hour light, then I put everything in my house on. It means I'll be paying more. But if I'm given 24 hours light, Maybe I know my freezer is what I needed most to have light. I put it on. And then maybe one bulb. And you know, the consumption will be less. Yes. And so I will pay less. But if I have to put everything on, then I should forget it. I should be ready to pay for it. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So more, um, yes, we know what foreign investors need. And definitely we need the government to actually regulate these policies yeah. to ensure that it will attract the right kind of foreign investment. Exactly. Yes. Well said, Mr. Adeaga. Well said. So now we know that this um, oil and gas is gotten from the Niger Delta region. And we know in recent times, this is still with focus to how the energy sector has been faring in 2024. We've seen issues of insecurity in the Niger Delta. We've heard of cases of pipe vandalism we've also i'm sure you also heard of the in the news the issue with the nigerian army and the community in delta state so these are some of the issues that these um oil producing communities are faced with so now recently now what um steps is the government taking to actually ensure that these majority of these insecurity issues pipe vandalism issues are quelled are put to rest because yeah. we can't we've been hearing of it every now and then in the news so do we need more partnership with this community to tell them, okay, these are the benefits Definitely. of having pipelines in your area, so you should not destroy them or you should not engage in um, looting or destroying the pipes. Um, recently, when an unfortunate incident happened by one of these bankers, uh, it's late now, he had a school somewhere around there. What he did was to call all the community, the people around there and say, this is your thing. If it goes down, you are down. If it's up, you are up. Meaning that he involved them. He makes them believe that it is probably maybe 70% yours. So why would you have something that is yours and you want to destroy it? You wouldn't want to destroy it. So government right now need to call these people together and say, come, we know we are getting all these things out of you. 
you will want to, to also to be part of it. How would you be part of it? Ensure that nobody can pass with it. If, for instance, we've been talking about it that uh, the benefit of mineral resources from different regions, the regions should benefit more than other regions. But we, we find it tough to do that. And until we start doing that, we will continuously have these issues. The Niger Delta is an oil producing uh, region. We all know that. Why will you get uh, about 100% of income in that area? And that area is suffering from pollution. And you are not doing anything. And the area that is not bringing that income, you are financing them, you are making them like an heaven. It is sure that one day, those people in those areas or those communities will rise up. And that is the reason why you see, sometimes you see people from those areas fighting the security arm. But what government needed to do right now is, we know these things are generated from your end. Let us sit down and talk. What is the percentage? Well, they have this 13%. We know. What, you know that, what is the percentage that you are giving them? You get it. It's just that my problem with those areas too is that those who have led or those who are still leading those areas, what have they been doing with what has come their way? It's been looting and looting. And you see, like the other day, somebody was saying that once they shock the mouth of uh, a, a chief or a king or whatever, he keeps quiet. And when the, the youth react, then that's when they say, ah, they are misbehaving, they are destroying and what have you. But they are forgotten that the person you shocked his mouth is not the only one operating that area. And it is even possible that that person will only take care of his immediate family. Long time ago, I'll give an instance. I, I, I hope I can use the company, all right, because of ADVA. Yes, let's not use any company. Because of ADVA. An oil company office was in VI. And people from Bayesa came to that head office to demonstrate what, was, what were their grievances. Their grievances were that the oil company, because they are extracting from there, and then they had a discussion with their uh, leaders. So they gave them money for distribution. Some didn't get. Those who didn't get knew that this thing came from Lagos. They came to Lagos to, go and, to come and demonstrate. And the company, the oil company brought a register and said, we have given money to all these people. And when those people checked their register, they discovered that the people you gave money to didn't even get back to them. So they now are saying, we are also from that area. So we are is our own. But in the wisdom of the uh, human resource person at that time in that company, what he did was, okay, we are going to give you something now, at least for the cost of your transport to Lagos and back and something to feed on. But we'll still come back to that place and we'll call all these people we have given money to to come and give an account. If by paraventure, any of you here, we have taken note of your names, is discovered to have been given something, we'll hand you over to the security people. Any final words on the Nigerian energy sector before we move? Uh, my final word is uh, for government to keep improving on collaboration and also to make whatever policy they are turning out to be of human, uh, whereby uh, people can be seen to be part of everything, not like an enforcement in totality, but collaborate and then ensure that what you are bringing out is physical, that people can see, and they can, Nigerians can then appreciate that government is trying its best. Thank you for that, Mr. Adek. It's Mr. my Adek. pleasure. So now let's take a look at the Nigerian exchange. So um, this week, how the market fed. Now, market performance um, in the Nigerian stock exchange had a positive negative 
look. So looking ahead, the coming week promises to be interesting. It might be eventful, so we never can tell with the Nigerian Stock Exchange. So now um, we can also talk about some, let's, first of all, let's talk about the things that could influence changes in the markets. For example, the central bank meetings, earning reports, and the global markets. So this new week, we saw that it ended on a positive negative note. So investors should definitely stay informed about the upcoming events and also we'll also talk more about economic data concerning this new this week that just ended today so um mr adeaga so this week the stock market closed on a positive negative notes so now how do you think um investors will react and seeing how it wasn't tilting to just one side alone how do you think yeah. they will react you know naturally the market is not going to be up in perpetuity or down in perpetuity it's a ref it's uh, a function of the demand and supply and information available to the market. And so, for every investor, um, more so that is a long-term market, let us know that it is when you think the market is a short-term market that you start thinking you must make gain. No, it's a long-term market and it's a capitalistic market. We cannot rule that out. And because we know that it's a capitalistic market and it's a long-term market, then we should be looking at what do we, that is investors, should just be looking at what does he or she wants to get out of the market. Some, what, why they are in the market is for uh, price appreciation completely. Some are there because they want to increase their stake, meaning that bonuses that are accrued from companies or dividends. And some is a combination of those three. That is bonus, dividend, and price appreciation. But if you must play in that category, it must be well-funded. You must have the capital for you to play in that category of getting the price appreciation, the dividends, and the bonus. Because not all companies that are operating in the market give bonuses. And not all companies that operate in the market give dividends year in, year out. Some, they had arranged it in such a way that yeah, whether they make profit or not, they will give dividends. Some, until when they make profit, that's when they declare dividends. And some, they give bonuses on the basis of their anticipation of their growth. Because bonuses are meant to kind of increase your stake uh -huh, and at a price. So, uh, my advice to investors is, if you are not too sure of any stock that you want to buy, seek the advice of the practitioners so that you don't burn your finger. Don't follow the bad wagon of, oh, I heard that the market appreciated by this. And then you quickly bring your money and say, you must have a knowledge of this, the sector you want to play in. There are so many sectors in the market. If you are not, if you are not knowledgeable about a sector, you cannot play there. If you don't have the funds, you cannot play there. Like there are some stocks whose prices are high. Yes. yes. If you must play there, you are ready to pay. Yes, but definitely. You we have to take advice from those stockbrokers because exactly. they are the experts in this sector. Exactly. Yes, yes. So, so well said. Well said, Dr. Adiaga. So, Mr. Adiaga, beg mm. your pardon. So, okay, let's take a look at the money markets, how the dollar has fed this week. So, um, today is Friday. So, we focus on just one particular foreign currency, how it's fed from Monday, 22nd April to Friday, 26th April. So, the selling rate is our focus today, the dollar selling rate. So, from Monday, and this is the CBN selling rates. On Monday, the dollar was selling for 1,010 Naira to $1. On Tuesday, it was also 1,010 Naira to $1, um, the, the same figure. On Wednesday, 1,010 Naira to $1. And on Thursday, also 1,010 Naira to $1. So for four days straight, it remained at the same price. But surprisingly, there was a change on Friday today. It moved up to 1,000 121 naira to one dollar so those are our um those are the selling rates for the dollar for this week we just focused on the central bank of nigeria selling rates this week so those uh, money market figures, as you can see, it's remained for one price throughout the week. And on Friday, it's surprisingly changed to 1,000, 
121 naira to one dollar so that's our time this morning on market exchange as we talked about the issues with the energy sector with focus on our petroleum and also on our gas sector and the benefits of this and also the challenges this industry has faced from 2023 till today uh, here, right here in 2024 and also we analyze the stock market and as my guest said investors should always take advice from the stock brokers on how to invest in any share or how to buy any sector they want to invest in in the stock market so thank you so much for watching market insight this morning as you listen to the words of mr kende adeaga as he shared he went in depth into issues of the Nigerian petroleum industry and also Nigerian stock exchange. Thank you for watching Market Insights and we look forward to discussing more economic issues with you next week. I am Lovina Emma. Stay tuned to news updates on Sook News Television. Mm -hmm.